Hey everyone, welcome to Area 616. Salute Cage Season 2 began filming early in June, but there were no real story details given. However, Marvel has just cast the main villains for Season 2 of Luke Cage. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about what we know about Luke Cage Season 2, who's in it and such. And of course, get to the castings, and a pretty big Marvel Cinematic Universe plot hole they cause. So as of right now, the only characters we know as a fact are returning for Luke Cage Season 2 are, well, Luke Cage, obviously, but also Claire Temple, Misty Knight, and Shades. Beyond that, there's been no real confirmations, but I think it's safe to say that Bobby Fish, Mariah Dillard, Diamondback, and Dr. Noah Bernstein will all be coming back. Also, Chio Hoderi Coker, the showrunner, said a while back that he wanted to bring in the Heroes for Hire in Season 2, so Iron Fist may v well be on his way there too. So the big castings are Mustafa Shakir from HBO's um, The Night Of. He will be playing John McIver, who's said to be a natural, charismatic leader whose mission is focused on Harlem and vengeance. In the comics, he's known as Bushmaster, He's had many run-ins with Luke Cage and Iron Fist. In the comics, he ends up going through the Bernstein process, gaining super strength and enhanced healing. It was heavily implied at the end of Season 1 that Diamondback would be going through this as well, so it seems like Luke Cage is headed for a lot of trouble here. The second villain cast was Gabrielle Dennis from Insecure. She will be playing Tilda Johnson, known in the comics as Nightshade. Here she is a brilliant holistic doctor with a complicated history in Harlem where, as much as she tries to stay far away from trouble, it always seems to find her. So it actually seems like she might not even really be that much of a villain, or at least that she's more of a sympathetic one. It's possible she might go through some kind of transformation like Mariah Diller did in Season 1. In the comics, she's mostly an enemy of Captain America and the Falcon, though she has encountered Luke Cage and Iron Fist in the past. There, she uses her brilliant mind to create chemicals that control men's minds, and she has even made a serum that turns people into werewolves, famously using it on Cap once. Now, will this be in Luke Cage Season 2? Probably not. That's a bit too crazy for the Netflix shows, I think, although, then again, they do have zombie vampire ninjas, so who knows. And Luke Cage is really the most comic booky of the Netflix shows f so far. I mean, it had a bullet made from alien tech and, and even went so far as to recreate Luke Cage's classic costume for a moment. So I think we might see hints towards this, but I don't think she'll ever go full werewolf serum. However, her being here does create one pretty big problem for the MCU, because it's the first time the continuity has been really broken. How's that, you ask? See this woman standing here with Eric Killmonger in the Black Panther trailer? That's Tilda Johnson, assumedly in Wakanda and very much not a holistic doctor trying to stay out of trouble in Harlem. There's been a couple of mild slip-ups before between Marvel Television and Marvel Studios, like when Alfred Woodard played uh, Miriam in Captain America Civil War only to play Mariah Dillard on Luke Cage later that same year. Then, not long after Doctor Strange, which featured Tina Minoru as a minor, little-seen ally of Doctor Strange's, another completely different actress was cast in the role of Marvel's upcoming Runaways TV series on Hulu. But with these, there's still a chance uh, that they could be explained. With Woodard, she's playing two separate characters, so it's not that big a deal. And with Minoru... Being in both Doctor Strange and Runaways, that's explainable. Perhaps in the show she could have some line about how she trained in Kamartage and fought alongside the Sorcerer Supreme. Sure, it'd be a little weird that she's a defender of the Sanctum Sanctorum in one, one second and a member of an evil death cult in the next, but it's still explainable. This isn't. These are both the same characters played by different actresses who both have completely different stories to them. It's not really possible to explain it. So is this really the first time the wider Marvel Cinematic Universe's continuity has been shattered? 
and it makes me wonder if we'll start to see more and more of this. Being connected to the movies has been both a blessing and a curse for the TV shows. On one side they have all these connections they can boast, and storylines they can share, but on the other, they also have certain characters they aren't allowed to use, and they get little recognition on the movie side of things. So is this Marvel Television's way of starting to slowly separate themselves from Marvel Studios? I think it could potentially be. They're too far down the line now to just stop being in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but I think they could start to focus on it less. Personally, I love the wider connections between the movies and TV shows, but I also understand why it can be pretty frustrating for the creators, especially if certain heroes share villains, like Spider-Man and Daredevil sharing the Kingpin, and, well, Luke Cage and Black Panther sharing Tilda Johnson. So it looks like they've just decided to start making good stuff without really worrying about it. However, it does seem like Tilda will have a relatively small role in Black Panther, more of a henchman than anything, so I think Luke Cage's Tilda will ultimately end up being the better character, and it wouldn't be too hard to just pretend Black Panther's Tilda is just has a different last name or something. Regardless, I think these castings are pretty great, and I'm really excited to see these characters on screen in Luke Cage Season 2. What do you guys think? Are you excited for Luke Cage Season 2? Do you like these villains, and what do you think of the apparent continuity shatter here? Let me know all your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. You don't know what you do to me. Let me tell you how you make me feel. I need your loving.